Hello everyone, my name is Daisy Daniel. I am the life coach at My Moment Life Coaching Services. Coming to you live every Thursday and Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. What am I going to be doing? Well, I am going to be reading a reflection from this book, The Language of Letting Go, by Melody Beattie. This is going to be a very casual thing that I do I do other videos where I prepare ahead of time, write outlines, etc. But what I decided to do with this book, because it's so good, and as you can see, I've read, I've read that much already. See my little bookmark there? What I would like to do is the following. I would like to continue where I left off and read something, you know, from, you know, the pages I have not read. Because I want this time to be a very casual and authentic time with you all and also a time of reflection for me so i will read it and then what i will do is i will open it up if there's anyone watching to leave comments i'm doing this on facebook lives which then i will upload to my youtube channel so be reflective be thinking about what it is i'm reading this is a very good book about codependency and codependency is something that i think all of us deal with from time to time especially if you have been in any form of abusive relationship guess what you are a codependent and many times people that have been in abusive relationships abuse themselves and part of healing is letting go of those relationships that are highly dysfunctional that are not helping you to become the person God made you to be. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start reading. I am punctual, I was a couple of minutes late, but I will be punctual every week, God willing, of course. This book is laid out with dates, as you can see. So April 23rd, that is not today's date, but I'm not going, like I said, by the dates, I'm going by where I left off so I could read something I've never read before and then reflect on it. Hey Kelly, good to see you my friend. All right, so today's title for this caption is Opening Ourselves to Love. Opening Ourselves to Love, here I go. Allowing ourselves to receive love is one of the greatest challenges we face in recovery. Many of us have blocked ourselves from negative love. We may have lived with people who used love to control us. They would be there for us, but at the high price of freedom. Whoa, okay, I need, I need to go grab a pen because when I talk to you all about my reflection, I need to know uh, what I want to talk about. And I didn't think of that before. Like I said, this is live, not pre-planned. So I will be right back. If you are not familiar with Melody Beattie, she wrote the book Codependent No More, which is pretty much like the Bible for codependence. And if you haven't read it, read it. So I am going to start over because she tends to, either is it because it's affecting me or, or what it is, but she's a very deep writer, but also very easy to understand. But she hits points that are very, very deep. So I'm going to repeat, not the whole thing, but the last sentence I just read. They would be there for us, but at the high price of our freedom. Wow. Wow. Okay. Love was given or withheld to control us and have power over us. It was not safe for us to receive love from these people. We may have gotten accustomed to not receiving love, not acknowledging our need for love because we lived with people who had no real love to give. At some point in recovery, we acknowledge that we too want and need to be loved. 
We may feel awkward with this need. Where do we go with it? What do we do? Who can give us love? How can we determine who is safe and who isn't? How can we let others care for us without feeling trapped, abused, frightened, and unable to care for ourselves? We will learn. The starting point is surrender to our desire to be loved. Whoa, okay, let me underline that. The starting point is to re-surrender to our desire to be loved, our need to be nurtured and loved. We will grow confident in our ability to take care of ourselves with people. We will feel safe enough to let people care for us. We will grow to trust our ability to choose people who are safe and who can give us love. We may need to get angry first, angry that our needs have not been met. Later, we can become grateful to those people who have shown us what we don't want. The ones who have assisted us in the process of believing we deserve love and the ones who come into our life to love us. We are opening up like flowers. Sometimes it hurts as the petals push open. Be glad our heart is opening up to the love that is and will continue to be there for us. Surrender to the love that is there for us. To the love that people, the universe, and our higher power send our way. Surrender to love without allowing people to control us or keep us from caring for ourselves. Start by surrendering to love for yourself this is so good guys all right and then after she does the little re um, reflection she has a little prayer uh, as you know the codependency and a lot of her stuff is based on the 12 steps here's the prayer today i will open myself to the love that is here for me I will let myself receive love that is safe, knowing I can take care of myself with people. I will be grateful to all the people from the past who have assisted me in the process of opening up to love. I claim, accept, and I'm grateful for the love that is coming to me. What I'm going to write next to that is the word trust. Okay, so this is a brand new reflection that I read today with you all. Parts of it were hard to read for me because many times when you've been hurt and you've been hurt badly, you put up walls. It's hard to open yourself to love and that's what the title is for today's devotional. So I'm going to read again the parts that I underlined. Feel free to leave any comments and to share what, what stood out for you, okay, about opening ourselves to love. So I underlined, I underlined one sentence, but I got to read the sentence before for it to connect. It says, many of us have blocked ourselves from receiving love. We may have lived with people who used love to control us. They would be there for us, but at a high price of our freedom. Wow, that touched deep. And like I said, I have not read this before. So <laughs> these Facebook lives are a little risky because um, I could become an emotional mess right in front of everybody. But who cares? This is a time to be authentic with our emotions, right? That is a crucial thing when you are a codependent and you give your freedom away to another human being that was never meant to be especially in marriage it's supposed to be an interdependence that means you depend on each other equally and ethically when someone controls you they are abusing you there's no nicer term to put it okay than that they are abusing you and what you lose is your freedom you lose your freedom so they would be there for us, but at a very high cost, our freedom. 
the other part I underlined was the starting point is to surrender to our desire to be loved, our need to be nurtured and loved. We will grow confident in our ability to take care of ourselves with people. I think part of not being a codependent is recognizing on a daily basis that you don't need other people to make you happy, to fulfill you, and to make you feel loved. I always say, and I believe this, you know, I'm a, I am a Christian, I love God very much, Jesus, and I always say that God and I are a majority, so I don't need a bunch of people to support what I do, to believe what I say, uh, to even agree with me. That's okay, because God and I are a majority. As long as I know that I'm sharing truth for myself and for others, because the Bible does say that when you are a teacher, you are held doubly accountable because teachers are very influential people. And whatever I teach, God is going to hold me twice as much accountable than the average Joe who says something. So I have to be very careful with what I say, but I believe that what she is sharing is true. We need to let go of our belief, our desire to be loved and our need to be nurtured and loved. We have to surrender that. So I want to open up. If any of you want to share in the comments and I will read it. Hey, Jackie. Good to see you, my friend. If there's anything that stood out from what I read, and I know it's kind of hard to remember everything because I have the book in front of me. You guys don't. But, you know, it might be a nice little book to get and and read so that when we do these Facebook Lives every Monday, every Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, so share it with your friends. I'm not going to read ahead of time. I am going to do it very authentically read it for the first time, probably cry, be a crying mess. That's okay. It's all part of the healing process. Uh, but what stood out to any of you? Let me see if anything stood out. Uh, okay, so Kelly wrote, wow, this is so powerful and applies to me. I absolutely do not feel safe opening myself to love because I do not trust that it is genuine and cannot bear any more heartbreak. I definitely need this book. Thank you for sharing. Okay, well, I think there are many people, Kelly, there, there are many people in this situation and that's why I wanted to start off with this book because like I said, it's easy to understand, it's very direct, very direct and it pierces the heart and learning to trust again after you've been burnt so many times is very difficult. I mean, I'm learning to do it. I am not great at it. I have a lot of walls up still, a lot of walls. Because when you've been hurt a lot, when you've been hurt repeatedly, you, you have to protect yourself. It's a survival mechanism. So we automatically throw these walls up and it's hard, but what she's saying is the starting point to surrender the desire to be loved, our need to be nurtured and loved. And, you know, nurturing is a, a powerful word. When I think of the word nurturing, it reminds me of something that I was told repeatedly uh, by someone who was supposed to love me, that I was not nurturing, that I was not nurturing to my children and that I was not nurturing. That word nurturing was always constantly thrown in my face that I was not nurturing enough. I was not nurturing. What is nurturing? Okay. Nurturing is, when I think of nurturing, I think of taking a little delicate plant and putting it in soil and giving it the nutrient it needs and giving it sunlight and, and, and pampering and Maybe not pampering, but really taking care of what is in your authority to take care of. And what greater authority does a mother have than to nurture their children, right? And yet that's, that's a word 
that was used against me. That is one of my trigger words, actually, because I believe I was very nurturing and still am. The problem is we don't always know how people want to be loved and how they accept love and how they perceive love. And if they're not willing to communicate that information with us and show us how they feel loved, it's very hard for us to read their mind, know exactly what to do. Uh, but I could say that I, I believe I have been very nurturing and continue to do so. And it's, it's not easy though, surrendering all those things, the need to feel nurtured. I don't feel nurtured at all. Uh, the only place I feel nurtured is between my relationship with God. I don't feel nurtured in other ways. Now, I do have support. I know there are people that love me. I have friends and family that love me, but uh, I don't always feel nurtured at all. So, Kelly, I could identify with that. How about you, Jackie? Anything you want to throw in there? I know you have a lot of wisdom. Anything you want to share? I also underlined this. Start by surrendering to love for yourself. Surrendering to love for yourself. You know, people might say, well, you're being selfish. You know, you're only thinking about yourself. You're only taking care about yourself. Uh, you just, you're, you're proud. You're this, you're that. Look, people have not lived your life. They have not lived in your shoes. They don't know. They have no idea what anyone has gone through. So they can't really say one way or another. Uh, but start by loving yourself. Oh, there's Joe visiting me. Thank you, Joe, for visiting me. Start by loving yourself. I'm going to read the little prayer again. Again, this book is called The Language of Letting Go. The plan is every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. lunchtime, Eastern time, to read one page without any pre-reading, without any pre-preparation, very authentic, coming to you, and just reading it and talking about it. If you'd like to purchase the book, get it. I highly recommend it. There has not been one page I've read so far that I disagree with or that did not help me immensely. It's a very cool little book and it's a very easy read. And I'm glad I'm gonna be able to share this with the rest of you all. Here's the prayer and we will end with that, all right? I will open the floor one last time for any comments. So be thinking if there's anything you wanna share, you never know who it could help. These videos I will upload to YouTube. For those who don't have time to see it on Facebook or don't have Facebook, it will be on YouTube and I will have my own little playlist about this book, The Language of Letting Go. Here's the prayer. Today I will open myself to the love that is here for me. I will let myself receive love that is safe, knowing I could take care of myself with people. I will be grateful to all the people from my past who have assisted me in the process of opening up to love. I claim, I accept, and I am grateful for the love that is coming to me. And, you know, there are people around us that love us. We might not feel like they do. We might not feel like they care. But they're loving us the only way they know how. The best way they know how. Some people just simply, simply do not have the tools to, to love you the way you need to feel loved. And that is why I think it's so important to have a relationship with God because he does love us unconditionally and the way we should be loved. So let me open up the floor one last time. Any comments anybody would like to share? Go ahead and type it in the comments and we will. I will talk about it. How about you, Joe? Any comments you would like to leave about opening ourselves to love? It's a difficult topic, I know. And it's also not easy to go on a Facebook Live and talk about your emotions. I get it. Very hard. Very hard to do that. 
But I think the more I model that for people, the less intimidating it will become because I think once we start acknowledging things and realizing things for ourselves, we are on the path to healing ourselves and, and being healed from the things that really prevent us from moving forward. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Facebook Live. I am going to end it now and visit my website. Those of you who don't know me, I am a Christian personal resilience life coach and my website is www.mymomentlc.com. And if you go to YouTube, you can see my other videos I've done and that's under My Moment Life Coaching Services. Thank you all for sharing this special time with me and I will see you on Monday, same time, all right? Take care, love you all, bye.